All right, folks, Hotel California, not everything is cracked up to be, that is, unless you happen to love wealth taxes. Joining us now is my favorite supply cider, or at least in the top two or three, Steve Moore, the Committee to Unleash Prosperity and Freedom Works and Govzilla. <laughs> and he's got himself with uh, dear Art Laffer, the Hotel California Wealth Tax. Uh, great op ed piece in today's Wall Street Journal. So, Steve, let's go through this. It's Cal. It's Illinois, New York, and Washington State. That's really weird. Washington State, I thought, has zero income they tax. They do, but they, they're, they're moving towards a wealth tax yep. there. And then I think you have Maryland and New Jersey and Connecticut. Oh, I know. Isn't that great? Yeah. I qualify in New York <laughs> I know. and Connecticut. All <laughs> I right, a lucky fella. I want to make sure people understand the reference to Hotel California. Mm -hmm. For people who don't know the Eagles song, but the, the oh. rip there... The right. rip there is you can check in, but you can never check out. <laughs> and so what California is trying to do, Larry, get, this has never been done before. It's probably unconstitutional. The, if Let's say you lived in California. Well, one time you did live in California. Yes. You move out. They want to do a clawback even years after you move out and impose a wealth tax on you. Now, again, I don't think that's, that's constitutional. But if you start doing that, who would ever set up a business in California? I I, mean, it's craziness. It is crazy. I don't mean to interrupt. I think New York does the same thing? They, they try to. Or they chase you down for seven Oh, yeah. Years. I mean, they will. I mean, and same thing in Illinois does the same thing. They're so hungry for revenue. Now, here's the main point, though, of our piece for people who didn't read it. Those states that you just mentioned have lost $250 billion no. of income from people moving out and where they're going to Florida, Texas, Tennessee, Idaho, those states. So the, essentially, Larry, I think this is the biggest story of what's happening in America. These blue states with high taxes, heavy regulation, forced union policies, they are being bled to death as people move out and take their businesses with them, take their workers with them, take the income with them, and move to these uh, red states. And by the way, liberals don't have any response to that. I mean, I thought they were going to build these worker paradises, but everybody's moving out. So, By the way, five million people in so, the last decade. So these tax penalties yep. have real financial... Con I'm just looking at your article. Yeah. Cost California $50 billion, yep. Connecticut $14 billion, yep. Illinois almost $50 billion. Yep. Maryland 14, Massachusetts 13, and New York, New Jersey 26, and New York. Oh, New York almost 80 oh, billion right. dollars. Yeah, wow. exactly. So that's the point. And this is year after year to. after year after year. My favorite, you know, example is Ken Griffin, who moved. You know, he's a billionaire. He built his Hedge business fund. in Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, had been fed up with the taxes and the crime in the city. You know what he did? He moved his business out. He moved it to uh, Miami, mm -hmm. and now Illinois doesn't have the revenue from him. He was the biggest philanthropist in the state. This is what happens, Larry, when you sock it to the rich. They leave. You know, New Jersey had this with another hedge fund. Oh, manager. yeah. Tudor... It wasn't Tudor Jones. It oh, was somebody else. Yeah. I'm not going to mention his name, yeah. but... Um, he put a huge hole in the state budget. So what would. happened was the, the state legislature had to reconvene <laughs> to find the money yeah, because right. he moved yeah. to Florida. You, know, you and I feel the same way. It's we like rich story. people, though. Oh, no, Why I'm do the, liberals hate I, rich people? I love rich people. <laughs> I mean, liberals, they pay the bills. They, like they make the schools possible, the roads possible. They build the businesses. They employ people. Oh, that's right. Why does the left hate successful business you people? You know, Kemp used to, late Jack Kemp used to always say, uh, liberals love employment, they but just they hate, hate employers. Right. I mean, that's always right. the problem. Speaking of all that, can I go to another thing? The Wall Street Journal, once again, uh, in an editorial, I guess today or yesterday, um, let's get rich people, let's, get tax, let's tax rich people so they pay their fair share. That's a Joe Biden thing. We're going to see a lot of that in the Biden budget that comes out. Right. The fact of the matter is the rich are paying vastly yes the uh, biggest uh, part of the income tax. Do you know much about that? Yeah, well, the top 1%, the one out of 100 Americans who are the richest pay 42% of the income tax. There is, for all the talk about, you know, we need more progressive policies, there is no, virtually no country in the world that taxes the rich as much as the United yeah. States does. You know, it's a, amazing that we're so successful as we are. So this idea that the rich aren't paying their... Now, are there some people who... Are paying taxes? Yeah, but you know the solution to that is the Steve Forbes idea. Let's just go to a flat tax. Everybody pays 19 percent. I mean, can you imagine what rocket fuel that would be for the American economy? So here's the thing. The top 1 percent, the dreaded rich people, right. uh, they paid 42.3 percent 
of I the think country's that's an all -time record. income taxes. It is an all-time record. Um, it's a two-decade high. Now, and by the way, that it, comes in the wake of the Trump tax cuts. Well, hang on, though. That same 1% earned 22% of, in of income. So let me get this right. You earn 22%, but you're paying 42%. Now, I would just um, think that's very unfair. Okay? <laughs> and I think, that, yeah. you, I think you should pay it on what you earn. This is a doubling. Yeah. So why didn't anybody ever talk about that? No one yeah. knows. It's, people know that some people know they, they pay more. They don't know how little they've earned compared to what they pay. I bet that's if you ask the average person on the street and just ask them, do you think what percentage of the top one per, of the tax do you think the one percent pay? They'd probably say less than one percent. The media and the Democrats keep saying they're not paying their taxes when, in fact, they're paying basically double their share. It's awesome. And by the way, the, the top five percent earned what, 80 percent or 38 percent, but they paid 63 percent of okay. the income. The top 10 percent are like. And the bottom 50 percent reported 10 percent of income, but paid 2 percent <laughs> yeah. of the income. Right. So you're right. It's a very progressive right. code. Right. And probably your point and Art's point is if you lower the marginal rate, if you flatten the rate some more and simplify the code, you could probably get them to pay more because there'd be less tax avoid. They'd actually yeah. pay more in revenue. This, this is the is reason. Is that not right? Yeah, you're exactly right. This is why we wrote the article. If, if a, a tax at the state level can impel people to leave and capital leave from the high tax states to the low tax states, the same thing happens in countries. So we're punishing capital. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Kemp was also the one who said without capital, you can't have capitalism, capitalism. right? That's correct. And so the capital will leave the United States. Just the opposite effect of what we had when you did the Trump tax cut when I think you know these numbers better than I do, we had a big wave of capital come back into the United States. It, turn, it turns so out this isn't complicated. We repatriated $1.7 <laughs> trillion. Right. Dollars. I remember the arguments with the CBO in 2017. They, didn't, they wouldn't give us any more right. than $400 billion. Right. It was $1.7 right. trillion. Akil is going to kick us both out. <laughs> but the point is, you get less tax avoidance when you simplify and lower the rates, and you get, what, more growth and prosperity. Yeah. Now, what the hell's wrong with that? Well, that's what Arthur Laffer's book, Taxes Tax Left Concert, he shows that's true every single time right. we've cut taxes for the last 100 years. Uh, he worked for Coolidge. I know you didn't, but you worked for Reagan. You worked for Trump. It, it worked every time. Uh, you're wrong. I worked for Harding. <laughs> <laughs> he was a great president, too. Very underrated. He's the one who started it. <laughs> anyway, Steve Moore, the best, the best.